Hello, today we're going to focus on oligopoly, specifically the Cournot case. What separates the Cournot case from other cases of oligopoly is that with Cournot, the firms are acting at the same time as each other. In other cases, like Stackelberg, there's a leader follower situation. And with Bertrand, one firm is trying to undercut another firm's marginal costs specifically. Let's take a look at this specific Cournot question. In this case, we're given a market demand curve that both firms face, and also a market supply curve or amount of quantity that is given based on how many units the first firm produces and how many units the second firm produces. That can be found here. So our market quantity is equal to the little qj plus the little qd. And then finally, we're given two separate marginal costs for each of our firms. Firm one has a marginal cost of $1, and firm two has a marginal cost of $7. In the Bertrand type case, we would use that information to see that firm one may undercut firm two. But in this case, both firms are acting at the same time and trying to maximize their profits. So we're going to have to do a little bit more math. Let's take a look at the math involved here. So to figure out the profit max for just firm one, what we're going to need to do is find their profit function. So we'll focus just on firm one first. Firm one's profit function is going to be over the price that they can receive for selling their good times the number of units they sell. I'm going to switch J to one and D to two for the purposes of this video. Um, so we have P times Q1, and then we're going to subtract out the cost for firm one. Okay, so from there, we can start plugging in some of this information that we know. For instance, this P function will always be 25 minus 3Q. So I can plug that in right away. I can say 25 minus 3. And I'm going to plug in for this big Q here, I'm going to plug in Q1 plus Q2, which is our Q function for this market. So I'm going to plug in Q1 plus Q2 here. Then we're going to expand this out also to have the Q1 still involved there. And then minus C1, our cost will be our marginal cost of firm one, which is $1, times the amount of units that firm one produces. So $1 per unit, their cost is one times Q1. Okay, from there, it's a bit of math simplification. So we can see that we have 25 minus 3 times Q1 plus Q2. So I'm going to first expand that out and say 25 minus 3Q1 minus 3Q2 times our Q1 still minus Q1. And I can get rid of that 1 there because we're not multiplying anymore, or rather, we're multiplying by 1, so it just kind of gets rid of it. So we're left with profit 1 equals 25 minus 3Q1 minus 3Q2 times Q1 minus Q1 as our new profit function. Again, we can still expand this out. So I'll go over this part a little bit fast, but we're just going to multiply this Q1 through by each variable. So 3Q1 squared, 25Q1 over here, and then a 3Q1 times Q2, and then still subtracting out that Q1. So now we can combine like terms, specifically this 25Q1 and this minus Q1 is going to turn into 24Q1 minus still that 3Q1 squared and 3Q1 Q2. Okay, in order to maximize anything, what we need to do is take the derivative with respect to that variable and then set it equal to zero. That's going to maximize, in this case, our profit. So we're going to say, the maximization of our profit is the derivative of profit for firm one um, with respect to Q1. And then we're going to set that equal to zero. So our derivative is just going to be 24 here. So that Q1 goes away. Minus 6Q1. We're going to drop down that 2 and subtract the exponent from 1. And then we're going to get rid of the Q1 in this term. And it'll just be Q2. Okay. I'm going to say equal to zero.
So again, we're taking the partial derivative with respect to Q1 for this profit function. Okay, now that we have this equal to zero, what we can do is simplify or rather get this in terms of Q2. So I'm going to say 24 minus 6Q1 equals 3Q2. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and get 8 minus 2Q1 equals Q2. So that's kind of our um, first function for profit 1. Okay, what I'm going to do now is do the same process for profit two. So I'm going to take that same framework and I'm going to say, now we're going to look at firm two's marginal cost and build their profit function and then maximize. So profit two is equal to the price, again, that the market demand is at. So this price isn't going to change between our suppliers. And then we're going to say times Q2 now, uh, because we're maximizing profit two, and then minus our cost associated with production for firm two. So that's going to be profit is equal to now still 25 minus three times Q1 plus Q2. And then we're going to multiply instead this whole thing by Q2 minus our marginal cost of seven for firm two times Q2. Okay, so that means that our new function, we're gonna expand this out. We're gonna say 25 minus three Q1 minus three Q2 all times Q2 minus seven Q2 is our new profit function. And then I'm gonna divide multiply out by Q2 here. So profit two is equal to 25 Q2 minus three Q1 Q2 minus three Q2 squared and then minus seven Q2. So bear with me, there's a lot of math in this question, but we will get there. So from there, I'm gonna subtract like terms here. I'm gonna say profit two is equal to 18 Q2 minus 3Q1 Q2 minus 3Q2 squared. And then again, we take the derivative of this profit function with respect to now Q2 to maximize our profits. And we're going to set that equal to zero. So we're left with 18 minus 3Q1 minus six Q2, set that equal to zero. And then I'm gonna switch around and solve for Q2 again. So I'm gonna say 18 minus three Q1 equals six Q2. Divide both sides by six, we get three minus one half Q1 equals Q2. Okay, now we have both profit functions in terms of Q2. So from there, I can set both of these equal to each other. So I'm gonna take this profit function that we found up here and this profit function that we found up here or down here rather, and I'm gonna set them equal to each other. And what that's gonna look like is going to be eight minus two Q1 which is again what we solve for Q2 over here, equals three minus one half Q1. Okay, then from there, I'm gonna subtract three from both sides, add two Q1 to both sides. We get three over two Q1 is equal to five. So that means 10 over three is equal to Q1. So that's our quantity one. What the question is asking for is specifically the Corno equilibrium price. We have an equation for our price here, which is P equals 25 minus three Q. And we know our Q to be Q1 plus Q2. So I'm just gonna solve for Q2 now. I'm gonna take my result for Q1. I'm gonna plug that into this equation up here, eight minus two Q1 equals Q2. 
you can use either of the equations circled in yellow. Both will work. So let's say 8 minus 2 times 10 over 3 equals Q2, which means 8 minus 20 over 3 equals Q2. So we have that Q2 is equal to 4 thirds. So we have Q1 equaling 10 thirds, Q2 equaling 4 thirds. From there, we're getting close to the end. One of our last steps is to take these two Qs and plug them into our original price equation. So again, price is equal to 25 minus 3 times Q1 plus Q2, right? Again, it's 25 minus 3 times this big Q, and that big Q is Q1 plus Q2. We just solved for Q1 and Q2. So I can say P is equal to 25 minus 3 times 10 over 3 plus 4 over 3. So that means P is equal to 25 minus 3 times 14 over 3. Cross these 3's out, so P is equal to 25 minus 14. So our equilibrium Corno price is $11 per unit.